This is millennial money mindset. If you want the fruits, you need the roots. If you want more money in your pocket, more time in your day, and more happiness in your life, then you are in the right place. We are giving away the best money tips to, to improve your life and to educate, empower you to make better decisions with your money. My name is Neil Doig. I'm the founder of Money Tips. This is a special episode. We're going through 52 investment principles. So I'm giving away all the best investment principles that I can come up with. And this is in the video. So stay right to the end because it's going to be super impactful. If you can just take one of these principles and apply it to your life, you're going to supercharge your finances. You're going to get more money in your pocket. You're going to have less stress in your day and you're going to have more happiness in your life. So if that sounds good, then stay right, stay right here because we're going to give away so much value in this episode. So the concept of this Millennial Money Mindset video is I'm creating a new card game. So I've created my first card game, which is called Football Formation Asset Allocation. The first batch sold out. It's an invest. It teach teach you how to invest in six minutes. We're taking it to the Edinburgh Fring, Fringe Festival in August, and I'm super excited about that. And we're creating a new game, and I'm kind of playing around with new ideas today. And what we're doing, I want each card i want 52 cards basically similar to like a card um a playing card deck 52 cards are in the playing deck and i want a, a tip or a principle on each card and i'm trying to come up with the best investment principles that i can to put on the back of these cards and i'm testing it out in this video so you're getting a sneak peek into what we do at money tips it's an education technology company making your life easier making more money in your pocket and more time in your day so i've created I, I couldn't get to 52 actually i've got to 50 i've got the 50 best money tips in the world combined or the 50 best investment principles that will teach you how to invest get more money in your pocket so I've, there's no no real great structure to this video today i tend to try and do um kind of structure my videos but essentially we're giving away each individual tip i don't think i'm going to get through all 50 in this video we might have to split it into two maybe i'll do 25 in this video and 25 in the next video but we're going to get kind of right into it and get you all the juicy details about the best investment principles so how i've come up with these i've been i started my company money tips over five years ago now and we are we might we give money coaching to help people make better decisions with their money before that i gave specific financial advice so as a reg uh, regulated financial advisor with the fca financial conduct authority i was with the a training program for six months of the one of the best financial advisors it's a FTSE 100 company and before that i was a trader for shell trading i've had 20 years experience of investing myself so i've kind of picked and cho chosen the best uh, investment principles and kind of boiled them down to these kind of key concepts. And as, as I said, if you can take one or two of these principles, you're, it's going to supercharge your investing. It's going to change your mindset. So mindset is super important. You have your inner game, which is your kind of your inner world, your inner thoughts, your inner feelings, your inner kind of uh, how you think and feel around money, your inner game. Then you have your outer game, what you actually invest in, what you actually um, improve what you actually do with your money do you spend it do you save it do you invest it and that's your outer game so there's essentially two things so your inner game your inner world is what my book millennial money mindset is all about and i've got a new book coming out i'm super excited called football finances manage your money in 90 minutes it's the last stages of editing and that's going to be coming out this year and that's your outer game so that's what you do with your money once you save and invest it or reduce your spending if you work that job what what happens to that paycheck what happens to that bank balance where does that money go and that's essentially what the next book is all about and it's about building a team of assets around you around think of it like a football game but let's get into it so let's go into these investment principles and so sit down strap in get a pen and paper uh because we're about to get ready we're about to go so number one so investing it's more about behavior than intelligence. So people have this image that you have to be some kind of like super intelligent person to invest. And that's you, you don't need to be that intelligent. You don't have to be that. In, we did a um, 
a video before about the seven things I wish I knew. And one of the things was you don't need to be like a maths genius to have investing. You just have to follow simple processes. And this is what I'm giving away. So essentially investment is more about behavior. It's actually what you do. So how you act more about your intelligence. So the, the, the simplest person could just set up a direct debit every month that gets paid into a savings account as soon as they get paid. And you don't have to think about it. You don't have to do anything smart. You don't have to predict what the stock market's going to do. You don't have to predict what people are going to, if we're going into, into a recession, if we're going into boom times, you don't have to predict that with investment. The simplest things work. Investing is simple, but it's not easy. So your behavior, if you actually rather than go out and spend your money, if you have your pay packet come in, if you have an automated payment system, if you have an automated direct debit set up into your savings account, into an emergency fund every month without fail, that's going to beat the 90 percent of people who are trying to time the market. So it's not doing it's kind of clever things. It's actually just doing follow simple processes and having a discipline to do that. If you have the discipline to do that, then you're going to beat 90% of the people who are trying to time the market, who are trying to outperform the market. You're just because you're doing simple, simple things, get brilliant at the basics and you're going to beat most people in this game of investing. So that's number one. So in behavior is more important than intelligence. So number two of the best investment principles that I've come up with is diversify. Diversify protects against your inability to predict the future. So you don't have a crystal ball when you're investing. You're not trying to predict the next recession. You're not trying to predict the the ups and downs of the stock price on. You don't want you don't have to predict what profits apple are going to make in the next quarter you don't have to do that investing this is kind of this is a fallacy of investing you just have to what and one thing to you don't have to do you you can basically diversify you can buy an index tracker that tracks the ups and downs of the market of the 100 biggest shares in the, the FTSE 100 the 100 biggest or the 500 biggest shares in america the s&p 500 or you can buy a global tracker that tracks all the 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 thousands of companies all around the world well big companies small companies developed markets developing markets all around the country all around the country all around the globe all different markets you can buy you know uh, gas uh, energy companies you can buy pharmaceutical companies you can buy you know food companies you can buy tech companies and if you just diversify your portfolio you diverse around stocks and um different size and different um different sectors then this is protects you against the inability to predict the future so we don't have a crystal ball no one can predict the future and it's not you don't need to you don't have to predict the future because you can buy the whole market you can own the world you can buy not just companies you can actually have money in cash you could have buy property you can buy bonds where you're lending money to governments or corporations so you don't have to predict the market you can diversify and that's going to protect you against trying to predict the future so if this has been valuable press the like button subscribe tell a friend about millennial money mindset so millennial money mindset was a book i wrote in 2018 it was shortlisted by the writing prize from the financial times it was an amazon bestseller 2019 and we have a podcast we have a youtube channel called millennial money mindset if you're watching this on tiktok I'm we're money tips on TikTok. We've got a website called moneytips.org. So tips is spelled with two E's, two P's, tax, investment, property, pension, savings. That's tips. So we give money tips, we give tricks, and we give techniques to improve your personal finances, getting more money in your pocket, more time in your day, and more happiness in your life. So if you want videos telling you how to get more money in your pocket, more time in your day, more happiness in your life, then press that like button, subscribe to our channel, because that means that it's telling the algorithm that you want these types of videos and it will send you more of these videos. We've got over 100 videos of good quality education, sh short snappy videos as well on, on TikTok or YouTube shorts, giving you away the best quality education out there. And we are giving away the 50, it's going to be the 52 
best investment principles. We're giving away the first two. The number three is compounding works in both directions. So compounding works in both fees and your returns and in also in credit card fees as well. So what is compound? So compound interest is the interest on your interest. So it's the most mathematical, powerful calculation out there. And it's mind blowing. Just go on to Google compound interest calculator, put in 500 pounds a month, put in 8% or average return over 35 years and you become a millionaire. This is insane. It's not, I'm not just making this up. This is mathematics. This is a mathematical principle that is not taught in schools. It's not taught in um, your your corporate job. It's only taught by people who create wealth themselves. So Albert Einstein called it the most powerful calculation on the planet in the universe. So this is compound interest. And you may have heard it, but the principle that we're talking about, it works both in so interest on your interest. So if you get if you put hundred pounds and you get five percent in the bank, you're going to get not just that hundred pounds at the end of that year, you're going to get five pounds back from that bank because of that 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 interest. And if you reinvest that five pounds, then next year you're going to get more than that five pounds because that's interest on your interest. And if you do that every year, it snowballs, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. You do this in the you can do this in the stock market where you can reinvest your dividends, which is profit that is paid for shareholders. Or you can do that in your say if you have a buy to let property, say you get an income from your tenant pays you your rent and then you in, reinvest those that that rent, the compound effect on that. It's going to build up over time. It's going to create this kind of snowball effect. But the, the principle that I want to get across today is it works both in compound compound interest, both works in for you. So when you when we'll talk about the interest on your interest, but it also works against you. So if you're paying high fees, this is going to erode your wealth compoundly over time. So I used to be a financial advisor and I used to charge crazy fees i used to charge high fees for my financial advice so people used to pay me tens of thousands of pounds millionaires used to come in and say neil what should i do with this million pounds in my bank and i used to build a portfolio best for them a diverse portfolio for them to best works for them including tax so tax incentives as well as a diverse portfolio to reduce risk and get higher returns but it worked, but because of those fees, that is going to erode your wealth. So I got, I used to charge five percent. The the high the the wealth managers that in the um, the best wealth managers in the UK, the FTSE one hundred wealth managers charge five percent initial fee, then one point nine percent ongoing fees. That's that's if you understand compound interest, that's going to erode your wealth massively. That one point nine percent, that's just paid in fees, not in that's going to take away from the gains that you're going to get. And so that's going to erode your wealth. Or if you pay expensive fund managers, rather than just, you, you can automate it. You can get robo advisors to do this for you. That's going to save you loads of money rather than fund managers who are, you're going to have to pay for their, you know, their, their office space. You're going to have to pay for their expensive lunches. You're going to have to pay for their salary. This all erodes your wealth. They're, you're making them wealthy rather than you wealthy. So compound interest works for you. We talk about the benefits of compound interest. This is great. But the, you also have to be aware that it works against you as well in fees and in, um, in loss fees and returns. So if you're getting you're paying expensive fund manager or financial advisors. This is means that they're getting wealthy and not you. So number three is compound works, compound interest works both for you and against you. And you have to be aware of that. And that also includes credit cards. We did a whole video on the dangers of debt and how destruct, destructive that debt is if you, you're basically borrowing money and that debt, basically you're paying interest on that interest and it's working against you. It's like headwind. You Either you want the headwinds if you ever cycled a bike in really windy conditions if you cycle it uh, and the the wind is blowing behind you you go so fast compared to if that wind wasn't blowing you blowing um blowing you along but on the flip side if you have a headwind it, it headwind if you have wind blowing in your face that's gonna you're gonna have to work much harder 
to get to your destination. That's the same with compound interest. So either you've got headwinds and it's working against you. That could be credit card fees. That could be financial advisor fees. That could be fund manager fees. And that's that means you your money is going to have to work harder or it's going to take you longer to get to your destination. But on the flip side, if you are having compound interest work for you, this, this is the wind that you're back going to going to get to your destination much quicker it's going to mean that you're going to it's going to be much less effort for you you're going to get there quicker and you're going to get there um in with less stress and worry as well so that's that's a big benefit for you so that's number three so compound work compound interest works both for you and against you so number four control your emotions or your emotions will control you. So I wrote a whole book about the psychology of money and how money mindset affects your, your um, how it affects your, how much money you, you get into your pocket, how much time you can get in your day and how much happiness in your life. So the book's called Millennial Money Mindset. It's on um, Amazon, just Google it, Neil or Google Neil Doig. And it talks about how the emotions of money and, so if a market crashes, for instance, if the stock market crashes, you're going to that's going to be quite emotional if you're if you're um, if you've got money in the stock market, because you can see your money goes down. And there's a thing called loss aversion. So loss aversion means that it's a psychological um, trait that we all humans have that we feel more pain for loss than we do the same amount of gains. So if the market crashes, you're going to feel much more pain than if you would have got those gains if you lost 10 percent, for instance i think it's like 10 times you feel pain 10 times as much as if you would have get the the same amount of 10 times increase so it, control your emotions or it, your emotions will cr control you so the trick is not to sell at the downturn so if you're if the market crashes what the tendency is is to sell at a sell at a loss and just get out because you don't want that pain i did that my first investment my first ever investment was lastminute.com the irony of the name was lost to me at a time this was during the 1990s and during the dot-com boom and just at, at the 2000 tech bubble when the tech bubble burst and the pain was too much for me to bear and i sold at a loss and if i'd kept hold of those shares they'd be worth so much more today than if i'd sold at the time so your our emotions control us and we need to be aware of this and once you're aware of this you can control your emotions and you can set up automated processes that um, that buy automatically or sell automatically and it means that we're not controlled by em our emotions so we as humans are triggered to be really bad investors we are counter we have the counter it's very counterintuitive but it doesn't make sense that, um, we should be buying when others are, are selling and we should be selling when others are buying and Warren Buffett says it best where he says uh, be greedy when others are fearful and be fearful when others are greedy and that's essentially the essence of this principle. So learn to control your emotions or your emotions will control you. So number five is the in best investments is the habits of regularly putting your money away. And we touched on this briefly earlier where essentially you don't need to be smart to be, you don't have to be that smart to be an investor. You don't have to be that intelligent. You don't have to be a math, a mathematical whiz. You just need to do this. The, you just need to be brilliant at the basics. So if you put money away every month automatically, then you're going to be beating 90% of the people trying to outperform the market. And this is great news. You just set up an automated process. It takes you like 20 minutes. I can teach people how to invest in 90 minutes. You, and it's so simple today. The technology today is amazing compared to when I first started investing. You just need to press a button, set it on autopilot and then forget about it. Index and chill. And yeah, people stress out about how um, how it's th they think it, it's more complicated than it should be. But it's actually really simple. And people get put, up, put off because financial advisors or accountants try and make it um or fund managers try to make it really kind of com complicated to try and pretend that it's some complex system when actually in reality it's simple it's simple but it's not easy so be brilliant at the basics and you'll outcompete 90 percent of people um out there 
So that's the best. That's number five. Best investments is the habit of regularly putting money away. So number six of the investment best investment principles out there is the best uh, is be bullish when others are bearish. Be fearful when others are greedy. So we covered that briefly. I kind of jumped ahead basically um, one uh, before. But if you understand this, this, um, this concept, this is really powerful. And this is more speculating than investing. And it al almost goes against what we're talking about. Just regularly put money aside of things. That's the basics. But then you get to more complex um, and then you'll kind of get to speculation. But this is kind of what Warren Buffett, who is the greatest investment of all time, does great. And he basically buys when others are selling. So there's a good example of the oil market. So the oil market in lockdown basically grind to a halt because people weren't going to work. People weren't um, because factories were shut down. The demand for oil dropped and people were... Um, Basically, because the demand was not high, the price real dropped so low and they were set trying to, you know, it went into negative figures. So the oil companies couldn't store this this oil. So they had to sell it at a loss. And if you gone in at that point where, you know, be, be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy when others are fearful, it was a real fearful time. It was a pandemic. We didn't know what was happening. We didn't know how long this, this pandemic was going to go on for. If you could have gone in, and be greedy when everyone was fearful. You could have put up all this oil and um, then sold it when there was like oil price hit record highs. If you saw like the Daily Mail headlines where you saw oil traders make millions of pounds in a day, if you sold it at its higher heights, this is where this is where the greats be, make themselves great. This is real tricky to do. It's easier said than done. But if you can get, time this then you're going to be kind of this is the top one percent this is the warren buffett's of the world and i'm not saying everyone can do this but essentially if you can be be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful then you're going to be winning winning at uh speculating so the next principle is that the most important attribute is mental and emotional discipline so discipline is key when you are investing so discipline both actually putting your money in actually being disciplined setting up more you don't even have to be that disciplined anymore you just have to set up an automated process that takes money out of your account each month like paying a bill every month that money goes off into an uh, emergency fund once you have enough of a savings buffer enough enough of a um safety net then you can start putting money into the into um the the s p 500 the FTSE 100 the global stock market every month without even thinking about it and that's discipline you don't have to think about it but the discipline is done now because you can do it automatically so you can take set up in 90 minutes set up in half an hour and then you don't need to be disciplined anymore because automation has made that for you so you don't have to worry about it now but there's discipline of not actually spending that money once you once that pot of money starts building up in your savings account there's a going to be a temptation to spend that money there's going to be a temptation to buy new shoes there's going to be temptations to go on nice lunches there's going to be a temptation to book that holiday and the the hardest thing is to refrain from doing this and actually have the discipline to not buy the buy the the shiny new object and actually get gratitude from seeing that pot of money grow and grow and grow and actually know that long term that's going to benefit you from you much more in the long term than taking the short term win that short term sugar hit rather than that long term in long term gratification of actually building a pot of money building a pot of capital that's going to start generating profits generate an income for you to free you so you don't need to work you have the option to go to work because you have this capital that's going to pay you an income each month. So, yeah, the most important attribute is mental and emotional discipline. So it's a mental discipline of actually thinking, not listen to that voice in your head of selling when you or spending that money. And it's that emotional. So investing can be emotional. It can be quite um, yeah, certain chemicals get that get released in the brain when there's downturn and there's a reward trigger that you know 
chemicals gets released, this dopamine, this um, serotonin gets released in our brain when we want to, when when we buy things, when um, when you buy that new shiny object, these chemicals gets gets released. But these are kind of fleeting chemicals that um, are not going to benefit for you long term. So that's the next one. Most important attribute is mental and emotional discipline. So the next principle is the only certainty is uncertainty. So the only thing that matters is, or the only thing that ha- we we know about is change. If you look back 100 years, it's so different to today. If you look back 50 years, it's so different to t- today. Even a year ago, it's, it's completely different. The world's completely different from today. Look at AI, how chat GPT is kind of incorporating into our lives. And it's going to get even technology is going to become even more relevant than ever before so the only certainty is uncertainty so you have to know that things are going to be uncertain we don't we don't know what's going to happen in 10 years time it's this uncertainty this un we don't know what we don't know and this can be scary this can be worrying this can be um yeah can can be off-putting because we don't know we like we humans like to be in our comfort zone we like to know what is going to happen but yeah this doesn't this doesn't happen in investing you 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 if you can predict that the the uncertainty if you can predict that all we know is uncertainty then almost that becomes um a certainty if that makes sense so you can you understand there's going to be ups and downs in the market. And once you understand that then and you're investing in the long term, then a whole kind of sense of peace can uh, descend on you because you don't have to worry about the ups and downs of the market. You just you just invest whatever, what the ups or downs. And then that's you. You don't have to worry about the ups and downs. And that's great. It kind of frees you from this stress and worry. And that's great. So the only certainty is uncertainty. So only change is guaranteed. So the next principle is the longer your time frame, the better your chances of success. So it's a real good. I had a sort of graph the, the other day. And if you're trying to day trade, if you're trying to buy and sell in a day, the likelihood of success is really low. You're actually because you've got to pay um, a certain number of fees. There's a, what they call bid offer spread, which is the difference between the buy and the sell price. There's always a difference between the buy and the sell price. So as soon as you buy something, that is um, that's going to go down in price almost instant instantaneously. You have to pay taxes like stamp duty. That's going to erode your gains over the long t- over the short term, and you could get it wrong. You could you're trying to predict will the market go up or if you're shorting the market will the market go down, and essentially if you get it wrong, then you're going to lose money in a day. But the good thing is, if you look at the probability a week out, um, a a month out, a year out, 10 years out, the probability of you getting it right in investing goes up significantly. The the, The probability if you're investing to 10 years and you're just putting money into a global index tracker, the likelihood is like 99.8% or something crazy like that because you're betting you're not not betting it's you're you're buying living breathing assets that are solving a human problem so you're buying companies that provide food for people hunger isn't going away you wake up you're hungry that hunger that human need for hunger isn't going away so if you own companies that that solve that need of hunger then you're going to be there's always going to be a need for that so you're always going to get profits from this business so for McDonald's, for instance, that business solves a problem of you know hunger. You, you, if you're out on a night out and you see McDonald's, you you haven't had dinner, for instance, you go and buy a burger or chips or what, whatever. That that part of those profits go back to the shareholder by solving the problem of hunger. So the problem of hunger is going to still going to be there in ten years time for humans so you're actually gonna the the longer your time frame the better your chance of success but if you're trying to buy and sell a new tech stock in a day you don't know if that's going to go up or down you can't predict that is the the probability of that is, is of success is quite low compared to the long-term time frame going forward so the longer your time frame so if you could think if you're not going to take that money out for 10 20 
30 years time. That gives you almost a superpower of your investing because you, if you're paying in each month, building up compound interest, you can, that's, that's going to benefit you long-term massively. So the next principle after the longer your time frame, the better your chance of success is don't try and beat the market. Try not to be beaten by the market. So as we said, don't try and buy individual stocks. We, You can, but you can do this, but this is a much more advanced technique and the probability of you getting it wrong is quite high. But the probability, the mathematical probability of just buying an index tracker every month, the probability of you getting that wrong, it's hard to get that wrong because you're buying hundreds of companies all around the world and you're buying businesses are solving a human need. So actually the probability of you getting that wrong is, is, is quite difficult. So if you actually think, don't try and get, don't try and beat the market, just buy index tracker every month and then without fail. And then you're buying an that capital, thinking you know, like capital, that's going to grow each month is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And that pot of money is growing with the money, not just the money you're putting in every month, but also the gains you're getting, the capital gains that are growing over time. And also the dividends you're getting. If you've got property, for instance, you're going to get rent from that. If you put money in a, into a bank, you're going to get interest rates on, you're going to get interest from that, that money. And it's going to grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. So don't try and beat the market. Don't get beaten by the market. And that's super impactful. So you're trying to build up. The aim of the game is to build up a pot of money. You're building your capital up every month, every year, every decade. Rather than you're not trying the game. The aim of the game is not trying to buy and sell stocks or trying to pick the next big winner or trying to, you know, outperform the market. You're just trying not get beaten by the market. And if you look, back i show i do um, a webinar every month and part of that webinar is to show a graph going back to 1780 and it shows all the ups and downs hundreds of years and it shows you the 1930s crash but then it comes back afterwards it shows the 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 great recession in the, the 2000s and then it shows the, the deepest darkest darkest recession that we've had headed into in the pandemic and it goes down, but it also comes back up again. So that principle, I think principle number nine is don't try and beat the market. First, try not to get beaten by the market. And I think the last principle, we've got 50 to go through. And I think this is the 10th one. So we're going to go through the, I'm going to do another video because I think these are hopefully they've been really impactful. What's been your favorite so far? Write down the comments, which has been your favorite so far. Is there any other principles that you would add to this list? Which other principles have we missed? Remember, we've got 50 coming up. So hopefully we cover that. We need two more. So I want to have 52 because we're going to make a new card game with a, uh, with a principle, investing principle on each of the cards. So if you suggest um, an investment principle, then we could add it to the, our new card game, which is adding to our education um resources we've also we've got a game already called football formation asset allocation we've sold out of the first batch um, but you can go on our website and you can you can list your interests you can put your interest in the next batch which is coming out very soon we're going to the edinburgh festival edinburgh fringe festival to test out we're going to have a tournament there our card tournaments which is exciting so yeah, subscribe to hear more about this. Subscribe to get more videos to that get more money in your pocket, more time in your day and more happiness in your life. If we give away also a video to teach you how to automate your finances to give you more me time. We've had over a thousand people take that training and we're on a mission to improve people's finances, automate their finances and reduce their stress and worry today. So if that sounds good, then put comments in below, subscribe to the channel and like as well. Share this with a friend because this really helps us out. It helps out with the algorithm and helps out giving money tips to more people. So let's go through the top 10 before we get to the number nine, uh, number 10, which is one of my favorites. So number, number one is investing is more about behavior than intelligence. 
Number two is diversification protects against your inability to predict the future. Number three is compounding works both in costs and in return. So are you batting against a headwind or is a wind going behind you? Are you going with the wind uh, as you cycle along your investment journey? So number four is learn to control your emotions or your emotions will control you. I think that's one of my favorites. That's why I wrote my book, Millennial Money Mindset, which has been your favorite, write in the comments below. The next one is the best investment is the habit or automation of regularly putting in money away. So we talked about that. That's we I give away a training to how to do that step by step. So if that's interesting, write yes in the comments, write um, just ask for the training. I'll send it along to you. So the next, the next investment principle. What we on to? The, what we on at the moment? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is number seven. Be fearful when others are greedy, and be greedy when others are fearful. I love that one too. That's more of an advanced um, principle. That's Warren Buffett esque, who's one of the greatest investors of all time. And then the next. The next principle is the most important attribute is mental and emotional discipline. I like that one, too. That goes with the mindset. So we talk about money mindset, how to improve your money mindset. Get the book Millennial Money Mindset. It was shortlisted by the Financial Times Writing Prize in 2018. It was an Amazon best seller in 2019. Pick up your copy today. Every new copy we buy you buy it, we plant a tree so you can feel good that you're doing your bit against the fight against climate change. So next one is the only uncertainty. The only certainty is uncertainty. I like that too. The only, only change is guaranteed. The next principle, number nine, I believe that is, or number eight, I think, is the longer your time frame, the better your chances of success, which is so true. The more you can ride out the ups and downs of the market, the more risk you can take, the better your return. So that is super impactful. If Are you doing this? Are you doing any of these principles? If you are, just put, 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 put um, a like or put a comment into the, the comments below. Then the next one, I think this is number nine, is don't try to beat the market. Just try not to be beaten by the market. Don't try and time the market. It's about, it's about it's not about time timing the market. It's about time in the market, which is super impactful. And then number 10, this is the last one in this session. We're going to do another video. If you want to hear from another video of the other principles, this is the top 10 principles, investment principles that I can think of. I can think of we've got 50 we've got 50 to go through so I was going to do all of them in this video but I think this is going to be too many so the last one is the less pay, the less you pay it to invest the more you keep for yourself so if you can reduce those fees if you can reduce those credit card fees if you can reduce those um, management fees don't pay for a fund manager to pay pick automatically stocks you can get you can get a, a robot to do that you, these days you can get that automatically done for you you know at, when you start out don't pay for a financial advisor to pick the stocks for you they're just going to put it into an index tracker i used to i know all the tricks of the trade that's what i you know that's what they i used to be a financial advisor and that's exactly what um the products that I used to use the one of the downsides of a financial advisor is they're stuck into their products they can only when I was a financial advisor I could only sell the products that the company that I work for produce and some of them were rubbish they're not as they, they don't even beat the market so why pay high fees to to do this just, this means more money in the financial advisor's pocket and more and less money in your pocket what you want is more money in your pocket and less money in the financial advisor's pocket. So the less you pay to invest, the more you keep for yourself. So do you want to keep more money for yourself? If that's the case, press that like button, subscribe to Millennial Money Mindset, and 
subscribe, tell a friend and all those good things. So my name is Neil Doig. I'm the founder of Money Tips, tax investment property of pension savings. We're an education technology company improving spending, saving, investing, getting more money in your pocket, more time in your day and more happiness in your life. So thank you so much. This has been the 10 biggest investing principles in the world out there that I've come up with. This is the top 10. Hopefully you've liked that list. We're going to go through the top 20, the top 30, top 40 and top 50. I've got 50, 50 principles to go through and we've only scratched this over. We've only gone through the top 10. So if you want the other principles, press that like button, subscribe for more videos and or send me a comment. So that's been the top 10. If you could just apply one or two of these principles, this is going to supercharge your investing. This is going to improve your investing for the better. This is going to get you closer to financial independence and retiring early. So you're going to have more money in your pocket, more time in your day. So thanks so much. My name is Neil Doig, founder of Money Tips. Getting more money in your pocket, more time in your day, more happiness in your life. Thanks so much. See you again.